I'd like to share a few excerpts from one of my favorite books, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. Now let me encourage any of you who have not read Atlas Shrugged to go tomorrow, buy Atlas Shrugged and read it. It's the book that arguably played a part in spurring the government shutdown as Republican Senator Ted Cruz read parts of it on the Senate floor during his 21-hour floor speech. And today marks the 56th anniversary of the publication of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. It's not only relevant if you read it, it's almost prescient. And um, it's, it's actually scary. Ken Mullis is the CEO of Mullis & Company, a world-renowned financial firm. He's read Atlas Shrugged four times and encourages his employees to do so, too. At Mullis & Company, I, I, I told everybody that it affected my life, and we, we, we created a book club, voluntary book club. We provided the, the food, the books, and uh, 60 people signed up to read the book with us, and we're kind of in the middle of that. And it's been very exciting to see people get affected by it uh, in the organization. Um, so yeah, I think, and, and I could see people being, have their eyes opened to, to new ideas. Atlas Shrugged is the story of a failing economy because the state is suffocating business, entrepreneurship, and individual freedoms. As an alternative, Rand formed her own philosophy, objectivism, which calls for an economic environment with very limited government. The book is seeing a new surge in popularity. Yaron Brook is the president of the Ayn Rand Institute, and he says almost two million copies of this book have been sold since 2008. What Ayn Rand does is provide the moral and the philosophical foundation for such a free society. So she, in that sense, she philosophically, ideologically, completes the work that the Founding Fathers started and is so desperately needed today in America. But not everyone agrees with her philosophy. Tom Hartman believes the government should play a much bigger role than what Ayn Rand calls for. You look at the difference between Somalia and a developed country, what you find is government infrastructure. Government provides the stuff that allows a marketplace to exist. In Mogadishu, you got to pay off the local warlord. That's arguably the government. But the local warlord isn't investing much in infrastructure because he doesn't care much if the business is formed, because he doesn't care much if there's a middle class. He doesn't care much about the people. He also believes in a strong government welfare system that provides for those who can't provide for themselves. Rand's critics say she lacked compassion for the poor, but her supporters say that she has a plan for them too. History again suggests that free societies are the most benevolent societies, are the most charitable societies, and that I don't believe for one instant that there would be any problem for those who are truly falling through the cracks for no fault of their own, for people who are truly just can't take of themselves, they would be provided for uh, through charity. According to a study by the Library of Congress, Atlas Shrugged ranked as the second most influential book of all time, only behind the Bible. So love it or hate it, you can't deny Atlas Shrugged is still relevant today, 56 years after its publication. In Washington, D.C., Perry and Boring, RT.